I first saw the pricing for the Mustang, I thought it looked pretty good, like a good deal. You get a 5 liter V8 Mustang with a manual transmission for about $50,000. Sounds like a decent deal in today's uh, world. And then I came across this article here, mus MuscleCarAndTrucks.com. I'm going to link this article down in the description if you want to go and check it out yourself. And then that this got me thinking, is the Mustang really a good deal? Or can you get something better for the same kind of price or even way less? So let's have a look at this article. It says, the new S650 2024 Ford Mustang EcoBoost Fastbacks Fastback carries a MSRP of $30,920 before destination, making it the more, most expensive base Mustang ever. Going down further here, we see the pricing for the 2024 Mustang EcoBoost Premium Fastback is now $36,500, while the convertible jumps that by $5,000 to get the base EcoBoost convertible. It's actually more expensive than the 2024 Mustang GT Fastback, which comes in at $41,500. So you can either get a, a convertible four-cylinder or you can choose to skip the convertible and get the same uh, V8 GT Mustang for basically the same price, $500 less actually. And then you have the 2024 Mustang GT Premium Fastback for $46,000, that's $2,650 more than 2023. And then you have the convertible version of the Mustang is now over 50 grand at $51,515. Still, nothing has changed in my mind. Same prices that I saw before. Looks like a pretty decent deal to me. And then there is a sentence at the bottom of this article that completely switched my mind. It got me thinking, which of these cars would I actually buy? And then we have this six, uh, S650 Mustang Dark Horse is priced from, priced from $57,000. Let's round it out to $58,000, which is $1,400 more than the outgoing Mach 1. It replaces. And then we go down to this. Chevy, though, they will sell you a 455 horsepower V8 Camaro for as much as Ford will sell you the new four-cylinder Mustang. So may, do, does that make the Camaro the LT1 a fantastic deal or what? So what we're gonna do here, I wanna check out this design and specifically the interior, see how I feel about the Camaro interior, if it feels too old or if it's just modern enough to justify buying the Camaro LT1 for what is it, $12,000 less than the, than the GT. So let's jump into Photoshop here and let's have a look at these designs. So up top we have the new Mustang GT. I, I like this design. I've made a couple of videos on it already. I think it looks like a, uh, as I said before, they're going back to this muscle car feel, specifically in the front end, and away from the sporty feel like we had, that, that we had before, where you have uh, the headlights going down in an angle like this, creating a more sporty look for the Mustang. Right now, instead of that, we have a clear hood line boom like this super aggressive and very muscle car feel in this in, in all of these graphics here a lot of horizontal lines and vertical lines it kind of works well together i've talked about the front end design of the mustang before so i'm not gonna spend too much time on it here but you get it for forty six thousand dollars the fastback gt the the hard top and you get the 5 liter V8, 480 horsepower, manual transmission if you want to, not a bad deal at all. But then, let's go down and have a look at what Chevy has to offer for $36,000, so $10,000 less than the GT Fastback, and about, what is it, $14,000 less than the GT Convertible. And let's have a look at this design. Do we still like the Camaro after their big mistake when they had these uh, wings on the side and then the, the grill kind of continues can continued all the way here but then they instantly received the feedback from their customers and they switch uh, quickly switched that up with a facelift so this is what the Camaro looks like today I think it looks pretty good but at the same time I always prefer the first generation of the facelifted Camaro because that one looked uh, like a proper modernization of the 60s and early 70s Camaros. Here we have the same problem that we had with the uh, with the Mustang becoming more of a sports car in its in its approach to styling and less of a muscle car. But it's fine. It's fine for $36,000 if you get these specs for that price. I think it's a great deal. You can also get this of course 
with a manual transmission. So let's jump in and have a look at the side views here. And this, I thought I saw double for a second. These look very much alike, but of course, at the top we have the um, the new Mustang. At the bottom we have the uh, the pretty old facelifted Camaro down here. And look at this section here, just how similar these two are, specifically with this line here. And then you have the roof line being a little bit different on the Camaro, going further straight before it dips back. Not really having this fastback sloping continuous curve that we have in the Mustang, but otherwise they look very, very much alike. And we have the same type of uh, graphics cut in in the bumper. The bumper feels like it at the same height here. We also have this cut in the bumper at the, uh, on the Mustang, which also look at this. We have the same cut in the Camaro. But I'm not gonna talk more about that. They uh, are very similar, but that's that. Both of them look pretty good. In my opinion, the Camaro looks like the sports car of the two, while the Mustang is regaining, reclaiming its uh, muscle car spirit with the new S650, specifically in the front end with the line we talked about right here. Too bad though we don't have the hockey stick design like we had in the 2010 Mustang, uh, and the of course the original ones as well. So which one do I think looks better here? As I said, the Camaro looks like the sports car and the uh, Mustang now looks like a muscle car, at least in the front end. But does it is is that worth ten thousand dollars more? And you also get twenty five more horsepower or something like that in the Mustang. But is that worth ten thousand dollars more than the uh, Camaro that's been around for a while? I am not sure. I want to hear what you think about this. Do you still think that the Mustang is a great deal with uh, the sticker that we have on the specifically the, the VA GTs compared to the Mustang LT1? Let's have a look at the rear end of these two cars. Honestly, this is where both of these cars to me fall a little short. As I've said before on the Mustang, I think this is a weak looking rear end and it doesn't have the same muscle car feel like we have in the front end. I've made a redesign of this already. I can pop that in right here so I don't have to do it again in this video. But the basics of that redesign was to stretch these lights out a little further down to create more, more of a, you know, the graphic features in the rear, have them be more pronounced, specifically these uh, traditional uh, graphics like we have in the taillights, have them be more pronounced in the rear end and then have this line, cut line of the trunk be horizontal and not have these upticks connecting to the corner of the taillight uh, housings. I also wanted to change this um, wing up top to have it just be straight and not have these dips in it like we have in each corner. Other than that, the lower part looks fantastic. I do want to have it stick out a little further. If you look at it more from a side view, I feel like it's sitting a little to this angle. Feels a little too angled. I kind of want to have it more uh, vertical like this to create that mass in the lower part of the of the rear end. Looking at the Camaro, not a huge fan of what's going on here either. To be honest with you, we do have a straight wing on this, and we also have some nice looking LEDs. But I think I prefer the. Uh, I think it was a previous pre-facelift uh, taillights than this because it feels like with every single facelift they did with this Camaro it got just more and more sports car and went away more and more from the muscle feel and I think we have that uh, same thing same feeling here in the rear end of the Camaro it feels like a sports car and it de definitely doesn't have the the muscle car proportions anymore like it had in 2010 it's got softer over time and I definitely prefer the original uh, rear end as well or not the original original the 2010 Camaro but we have to have a look at the interiors here because the Camaro as I've said has been around for a while now and the Mustang is brand new but do I like the interiors of the new Mustang not really I, I do ev I like everything else except for this big screen and as I've said before as well, we don't have these wave design that we have in, in even the Mach-E got that treatment and they just skipped it on the proper Mustang and I don't know why because that is an interior feature that's been around since the very beginning in 1965 of the Mustang and it ju they just skipped it for this uh, version and I, I'm not sure what the reasoning behind that was but we do have a flat bottom steering wheel I would like to have a housing for the gauge cluster and the integration of the screen here to the side just a little bit better. Yes, you can uh, customize the gauges, but you could still do that even though if you created a house for the for the gauge cluster. 
and I think overall it's a very modern techy looking interior but does it suit a Mustang? I'm not so sure. The good news is that we do have the manual transmission right here. Everything else except for the screens I'm a huge fan of. We do have some buttons down here. Thankfully I, I can't really see what they're for. It looks like traction control here. We have some uh, vents or something like that. Some AC controls. The auto, auto stop start. Definitely turn that off every single time you start the car. And then we have the Camaro down here. And I can tell you that this definitely feels way more dated than the Mustang, that's for sure. But we do have a housing for the gauge cluster. Not a huge fan of how far up these two mountains stick in in front of the driver. You're already compromised looking out of a Camaro because the greenhouse is so tight. And then you have these things sticking out right in front of you, preventing the view uh, straight out even more. But it does have a pretty clean interior and we have it's sort of a interesting, I would say, integration of the gauge cluster. Not the not the most beautiful integration, but it is separate from the gauge cluster and the you know rest of the dash, which is a good thing. And of course, here as well, we have the uh, manual transmission. So as I said, the Camaro feels a little more dated, or pretty m a lot more dated than the Mustang interior. But is it $10,000 worth to upgrade to the interior of the Mustang or would you be fine with the interior of the Camaro? You still have the manual transmission, still have a 6.2 liter V8, 455 horses, rear wheel drive, not bad at all. For me, I'm not really sure here what I would pick. I would probably go with the, the not the convertible GT, but the uh, fastback new Mustang GT for what was it, forty six thousand dollars or something like that? Then it then it's ten thousand dollars more than the LT one, and you also get these modern features and the new design of the Mustang, which I think is important because it looks like a muscle car in the front end, while the Camaro is still moving further and further away from muscle car and into the sports cars. But the thing is. You, if you want a V8, 6.2 liter V8 Camaro, you better buy it right now because the last thing I've heard about the Camaros is that they're gonna make it into a, I'm not sure how to break this, but a four door electric sedan. That's what the next Camaro uh, might be. Is it just rumors right now, but that's uh, it looks like they're heading into definitely an electric version of the Camaro, if it's going to be a coupe two-door or a sedan or an SUV, who knows these days. But let me know what you think. Which one of these would you pick? Is it worth upgrading $10,000 to the new Mustang GT? Or would you prefer to go a little bit old schooler and choose the LT1 Camaro?